PC cases traditionally have solid front panels, although the difficulty with solid panels is getting the right amount of airflow through them. This is where airflow front panels for PC cases come in. I purchased my case in 2017, it's a solid panel one from Corsair. Although it did perform well with lower tier parts, I found that as I started to upgrade my PC, things started to get heated. For my Ryzen 7 3700X, I had upgraded to an AIO, but I quickly realized that the 980 Ti that I was about to install was going to cause some issues. So today, I'm going to show you how I made my front panel into an airflow one, and how you'd be able to do the same thing. First off, I started by making sure my front panel actually has some mounts for some fans on them. Check this on the physical metal part of the case. There should be some place for some screw holes and where the fan should mount on. Next step is to check how large the front airflow panel needs to be. It needs to be slightly larger than the fans you have installed or if not the same size as them. I would suggest marking this out now as the size needs to be sorted out right now so you know what you're going to be cutting out later. Now we have to find the material to use for the mesh front panel. Finding the material to use is a bit tricky here, as we need to find something that has suitable airflow. I had found this one metal sheet from Mitre 10, but it's about $50 and will be a bit difficult to cut due to it being metal. Although the metal mesh being a good option, I personally have access to a laser cutter thanks to my uni. So I made my own design on Adobe Illustrator and picked out a piece of black acrylic. The best part of all of this is that it was completely free. I had accidentally snapped mine on the first go when I was bringing it home, so I had to make a second one and I made another one with wood as well. So I had two options, either black acrylic or wood. I believe the reason my original one did snap is because of how much material was missing from it by cutting the holes out making it structurally weak. Now if you don't have access to a laser cutter, the Mitre 10 metal mesh sheet might be a good option for you, although it will take a little bit longer to spray paint and cut out. Do keep in mind it might last a little bit longer just due to its material used being metal and not plastic. When you do have your mesh panel cut, make sure the edges are slightly smaller than the hole you want to cut into your front panel. It should be around the same size as we want to make sure it sits flush. Cutting a clean space for the mesh airflow is the hardest part. I personally used a Dremel tool but this was super hard. The plastic on my front panel is very thick and if you cut at a high speed, it will melt the plastic a bit. Try cut at a lower speed and it shouldn't melt as much. I did my best when cutting out the hole and made sure that the hole was slightly larger than the mesh panel as I want the mesh to set flush with the front panel. After cutting it out, I used some sandpaper and lightly sanded the hole as well just to make sure all the jagged edges are gone away relatively. At the laser cutter again at university, I also had to make another rim to glue onto the mesh panel in order for it to anchor flush to the front panel. This was a bit awkward to glue on but I got it there in the end. You can let it sit behind as in the hole you cut is smaller than the mesh piece you cut out to make it a little bit easier but I do prefer the flush look you get by making another layered rim for the piece of mesh to sit on the front panel. If you still have jagged edges and bits on the front panel where you cut out the hole, don't worry too much even if you did sand because there is a bit of a solution to that that I personally used as well. The next part is to actually install the piece of mesh into the front panel finally. I personally use hot glue and make sure my glue was sitting for about 30 minutes on so the glue was nice and hot, but super glue or some sort of other epoxy might last longer and be a bit more durable in the long run. Either if you use epoxy or use a hot glue gun, make sure you set it down and make sure it's flush to the panel on the other side. You want to make sure it's looking as flush as possible. Well at this point it's looking pretty good right? Well mine has some jagged edges still and looks a little bit odd although I did sand it down. Luckily the solution to this is pretty simple. I bought some vinyl wrap just in case this happens. 
I cut up pieces of vinyl and laid it around the airflow mesh front panel, the one that's completely stuck on now. So I had to match the vinyl on the bottom and the top. Basically, the entire panel needed to be covered in this vinyl and I just cut individual strips out. It's pretty hard to tell where I've been cut it from afar. If you go really close, you can tell. But that's kind of the solution, just layering it over where the jagged pieces are and making it look square. Lastly, you will want to put an air filter mesh behind your airflow front panel to make sure you can easily clean the dust out later. Now I left mine without one just for this video, but I did add one in later. It is important as it makes it a little bit easier to clean and as well you don't want to have too much particles and all this random stuff coming into your PC anyways. Finally, we have a finished DIY airflow front panel. It looks really good to me and it helped my PC a lot with the amount of air coming in. In terms of temperature, my CPU didn't change really too much, but my 980 Ti was running about 5 degrees lower before when running a 3D Mark benchmark, which is a decent amount and at least means that the airflow front panel is working in some capacity. The finish to me looks amazing and helps with the aesthetics of the build as well. I think it's a worthwhile project, although it does have its odds and perks when building. I love making my own DIY projects, and I have so many more left to make videos for. So if you guys want to see them, make sure you subscribe and share this video around. Also, check out ystech.org for some more awesome technology content. But that about sums it up. Thank you guys very much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.